What's up guys, it's Paralyzer here, and welcome to Myth Busting Part 24. This is the series where I take your myths from the comments below and break the game in as many ways as possible. Trust me, you need to watch today's episode because with your help, I completely broke the game. They're gonna have to make a new hotfix for the game once you've watched this video, I'm not joking. Don't forget to leave your myths in the comments below and let's get straight into it. The first myth in today's episode has been sent in by that mythic guy who asks, Myth, if the black ants don't burn in the sandbox, do they burn in the charcoal area? Now previously we tested if they sizzled in the sandbox and they didn't, so today we're going to test it at the charcoal area. I headed to the barbecue and spawned in some ants, making sure they were trapped near some of the hot charcoal. I waited a while, but they didn't sizzle or take any damage, so this myth is busted. You can't sizzle black ants. In fact, I don't think any creatures in the game take any form of sizzle damage other than the teens. Our second myth today has been sent in by Babs VR, who says, Myth, you can use the wolf spider dagger underwater if it's broken. Let's check it out. I first had to break all four daggers as I wasn't going to test it with just one. When you equip the dagger, it's invisible, but as you can see, it does work with the pebbler dagger. Next, I tried the bone dagger on a diving bell spider, which also worked. Finally, I tested the spider fang and widow dagger, and these both work too. So this myth is confirmed, you can use any dagger underwater when broken. Definitely a bug that will get patched, but it's pretty funny nonetheless, and you can definitely exploit this to never repair your daggers. Today's third myth has been sent in by G. Thompson Music, who says myth, you can build under the broodmother's lair inside of the hedge to get a health boost from level 5 cozy. Let's check it out. I summoned my handy nat and got flying. It's worth noting, if you don't have the handy nat, you can build up here in a survival world instead. Eventually, I got to the broodmother lair, or at least the outside of it, and began building. I placed everything I could think of for as much coziness as possible. Probably worth noting you should build a little lower than me, as the height can be a problem for some stuff. Once built, I headed into the arena, and as you can see, I had level 5 coziness. But would it carry into the boss fight? I summoned the brood, and as you can see, I still had the buff, including the healing buff you get from having level 5. So this myth is confirmed, you can get buffs inside of the Brood Mother fight to help you beat it if you're desperate or if you're just late into the game and want to make it easier. This did bug the spidelings when they were dropping in though, so be careful, it might cause a few other issues. The next myth today is going to break the game so badly, the devs are going to have to release a patch. So if you're watching, I'm sorry in advance. This myth has been sent in by G. Thompson Music again, and says myth, you can build underwater and inside of boss dungeons and caves, but only with full acorn stairs. Let's check it out. I first tested it underwater. As we know, you can't build underwater in Grounded, so there's no way it's going to work. Okay, so you can build underwater using this, but it's just the stairs. That's useless. Let's go test it in a boss arena. I head to the infected broodmother arena, and as you can see, you can't build in here at all. I tried the acorn stairs, and, and it let me. That's right, you can build these anywhere, in every boss arena, to cheese every boss, in the undershed, underwater, literally anywhere. So this myth is confirmed. I'm not going to show you how to use it to cheese the bosses, because I don't like doing it. But just trust me, you can, and I apologise to the devs yet again, as they're going to have to fix this pretty quickly. Up next, we have a myth from Vin, who asks, Myth, does the mom genes mutation help poison damage from the rotten berry charm? Let's check it out. I tested this with an orb weaver, and I hit it five times on both occasions before the poison effect activated, making this a completely fair test. As you can see, when Mom Jeans was equipped, it actually did do slightly more damage, so this myth is confirmed. The Rotten Berry Charm effect is impacted by Mom Jeans, meaning it does count as poison damage, although I wouldn't recommend using it at all, to be completely honest. Rotten weapons are just really, really weak, and you have to beat the Broodmother to get this mutation, so it's not really a good combination. Our next myth today has been sent in by Bjorn Tegman, who says, Myth. The red effect from Barbarian, yellow effect from Wolf Spider Poison, and purple effect from the water in the arena combine into a new colour. Now I first tried this with raw food, which gives a yellow sickness effect, but the raw food sickness doesn't stack with the water sickness, although Barbarian and the water combine for a beautiful pink effect. 
Next, I tried it using a wolf spider to poison me and then drank the water, giving me a blue effect before activating Barbarian, making the pink effect yet again. So this myth is confirmed. There are new colours now that the blue water has been added to the game, but I don't think there's one for combining all three, just combining two at a time. Today's next myth has been sent in by Eat Your Greens, who says, Myth, do you need to turn on faction reactivity so you can go in the brawny boy bin? Let's check it out. I loaded up a new world with faction reactivity disabled and went around destroying every wasp nest I could find. They didn't get annoyed at me at all. So this myth is confirmed. You can't open the brawny boy bin with faction reactivity as far as I can tell, unless I missed some sort of step that I'm not aware of. I'm pretty sure you just have to load up a new world and break a bunch of wasp nests. The next myth in today's episode has been sent in by Doc Mock, who says myth. If you sleep using the juicy mutation, you lose less water. Let's try it out. I first slept without juicy equipped, and my water went down to just below the droplet. Then I reloaded my save and equipped juicy before sleeping, but it went down to the exact same spot just below the water droplet, so this myth is busted. Equipping juicy doesn't help you when sleeping at all for some strange reason. This would have actually given juicy a useful effect for once, but no, it's still the most useless mutation in the game. Next up, we have a myth from God Lockdown, who says, Myth, you can kill the orc fire ants in Director Schmechter's lab using staves. Now, I thought I'd test this with as many things as possible. First, I tried the super gas arrows, which do indeed damage the enemy and eventually kill it. Next, I tried out bomb arrows, but these were unable to hit it through the wall. After that, I tried the fresh staff, which also was unable to hit the enemy. Next, I tried the spicy staff with both attack types, but neither were able to hit it. The moldy matriarch blaster also didn't hit the orc fire ant. And finally, the sour staff does hit it, but only with the charged attack, and it kills the ants very quickly. Be warned, you need to be careful with this, as it can give you threat detected, which means you can't start the Schmechter fight until you leave the lab and come back. But this myth is confirmed, you can kill the orc fire ants in the lab using the charged attack from the sour staff and the gas arrows. Up next, we have a myth from Xylo, who asks, Myth, ladybirds can deal tier 3 busting damage, but can they open the giant scabby using it? Now we know from the past that enemies that deal busting damage do it equivalent to the tier that they are at. So since ladybirds are tier 3 and do busting, can they open the giant scabby which requires a tier 3 hammer? I got the ladybird to attack me for a couple of minutes trying everything to get it to hit the scabby, but whatever I tried, it just wouldn't open. I tried again, but using a roly poly this time as they also do tier 3 busting damage. But yet again, they just wouldn't hit the right area to open up the scabby. So I'm going to say this myth is busted. They don't seem to be able to open up the giant scabby, unfortunately. I have sent in our next myth today. That's right, me. I was scrolling through the grounded Reddit and saw an image and thought of a myth myself. Myth, can you block the cutscene from the Mysterious Machine? Now, for those who don't know, the cutscene when activating the Mysterious Machine is live in the game, so you can see everything you've built. But what if you build right in front of the camera? Let's test it out. I first tried it with just one wall, which as you can see made it into the cutscene, but didn't block the whole thing, only part of it. I added one more wall, and when I tried it the second time, this is what it looked like. That's right, I just about covered the entire cutscene. You can't see anything going on, which I thought was pretty funny to be honest. So this myth is confirmed, you can cover as much of the cutscene as you want. This would probably also work for the final cutscene as well. Today's next myth has been sent in by Bjorn Tegman again, who says, Myth, if you stand on a sap catcher and relocate it on your feet, it flings you into the air. Now this is similar to what you can do with the Mant statue, so let's see if it's possible. I went to the oak tree and got a sap catcher and relocated it by my feet over and over again. I tried this for two or three minutes, but just couldn't get it to do anything. I asked my discord to see if they could also do it, but none of them were able to do it either. So I'm going to say this myth is busted. I couldn't seem to do it. So maybe it's a really rare glitch that's really hard to pull off and it is possible, but I couldn't figure it out to be honest. 
The next myth in today's video has been sent in by a regular of the series, Black Widow, who says Myth, the Broodmother Scream, reaches out of her arena, and if so, can she damage the Mant Gong for a mid-fight buff? Let's find out. I headed to the Broodmother Arena and placed the Gong outside as close as possible. I headed inside and summoned the Broodmother and took her to the corner closest to the Gong before getting her to scream. As you can see, this didn't activate the gong, as neither the broodmother nor I got an attack buff from this. So this myth is busted, the brood scream doesn't activate the gong. I also tested this with the mantis scream, in case anyone was curious, and it also didn't work, so double busted, I guess. Our penultimate myth today has been sent in by Random Lima, who says, Myth, think bugs take damage from rotten food. Now, last episode, we discovered that black ants don't take damage from rotten food, but they do take damage from the haze gas. Let's see if it's the reverse for the stink bugs. I headed into the trash can and magically summoned a stink bug. And as you can see, it didn't take any damage from the rotten food, so this myth is busted. Stink bugs don't take gas damage or damage from rotten food. The final myth in today's video has been sent in by Just Scarpy, who says, Myth. If you talk to Wendell underwater, it'll pause the drowning timer. Let's give it a go. I told Wendell to follow me and then dropped into the water with 30 seconds of oxygen. I talked to him and then waited. After about a minute, nothing had happened. And when I exited the dialogue, I still had the same oxygen level. So this myth is confirmed. Talking to Wendell does pause your O2 meter. But would it be the same in multiplayer? Thanks so much for watching this episode of Myth Busting. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like on it. Comment your myths down below and I'll see you in the next Grounded video. Have a great rest of your day.